there is nothing quite like autumn. I mean, is there anyone who doesn't hold memories of it close? Find me one person who hates the change of summer into fall, when the leaves saturate with golden yellows, sunset hues of orange and vermilion, glazed by a chilled rain, contrasting the speckled grays of the cobblestone and the browns of coffee and books. Pumpkins and squash and gourds of odd shapes are marking every porch alongside scarecrows and Halloween decor. You don't have to worry about your makeup sweating off, but you're also not quite at the point where breathing itself is painful and everything smells so full of flavor. It's bold and colorful, yet somehow nostalgic and homey. Autumn is considered one of the most beautiful symbols of change. The wintry days that come after are usually not anticipated, except for the flair that it gives the holidays. But if I could somehow instate autumn as an eternal season, I think many would vote me in as president real quick. Sometimes it can be hard to find beautiful change in your own life because we don't view good change as change. We call it by other names. We call it evolution or success. We call it a glow up. The couple who has been trying for their first child and finally has one, well, nobody's denying that their life has significantly changed, but also most people don't view that as a veer off course. They view it as a milestone. I guess because it's viewed as desirable change, I mean, how often do you think about the idea of desiring change? You don't. You just think about desiring a specific thing. The idea of something changing usually comes up when it's not desirable. For instance, an unplanned child can add tons of stress to somebody's life. So does that mean that there are only two types of change? One of progression and one of regression? There is a right time for everything and everything on earth will happen at the right time. This is taken from a passage in Ecclesiastes, which happens to be one of my favorite books of the Bible, and it talks a lot about um, existential crisis, a little bit of philosophy, and what follows this specific passage, this specific quote, is a long list of seemingly opposites. So, for instance, there'll be a line that says, there is a time to cry and there's a time to laugh. There is a time for war and there's a time for peace. And when I see that, when I hear that, I see a complimentary push and pull of life. Is it fair to say that the push and pull of gaining and losing, of life and death, is like taking one step forward and one step back? Regression on the heels of progression? Maybe. Lots of people see it that way. Peace is good and war is bad and if we've had peace for decades and suddenly we have a war then we must have done something to move in the wrong direction. Beautiful change is good. I think the best thing for people to do is to be happy and to enjoy life as much as they can. Beautiful change, desired change, is good and I think the best thing for people to do is to be happy and enjoy life as much as they can. Happy people make for a happy world but at some point Everyone will go through stuff that sucks. That's just life. It's inevitable. And your attitude when those things do happen can make or break you. I'm not saying we should run headfirst into terrible things, especially if we can avoid them. Please don't come to that conclusion from my words. That's the last thing I want, is to encourage objectively bad things. But it's one thing to avoid bad situations to the best of your ability before you're in them and a whole nother thing to let those situations consume you after you're already in them. As if you're trying to reverse time and go back to a place where it never happened. Learning to accept change, I think, is one of the most beneficial things anybody can do. And it, it looks different for everyone. I mean, how I choose to do it is by strengthening my humility. Not an easy thing, because I think as humans we are not naturally humble, but I find it's a lot easier to accept change in my own life when I view my place in this world as a very small portion where sometimes things happen that I don't have control over. When I begin to think that I have lasting power in this world, that's when I start to place too much responsibility on myself for things that I cannot handle. I start to blame myself because if I have the power to control my life and to control the outcome of every situation that I'm faced with, 
whether it be by the idea of manifestation or self-love or confidence or whatever, then when those things do happen, I think I should have been able to avoid it. What did I do wrong? Why was I not able to prevent whatever terrible thing happened? Like a convoluted version of survivor's guilt. But I'm not that powerful. And I think there's so much freedom in that mindset. It also helps to remember that there is nothing new under the sun and history repeats itself time and time again. And if humanity has been able to overcome their struggles so far, it helps me believe that I can overcome my own struggles in my life. Maybe for you it's viewing that anything that is bad that happens in your life is a canon event. Or maybe you have to just stop calling them good and bad things and start calling them easy and hard things. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I've had the hardest life. I've had a, an amazing life, but it's not always been easy. There have been lots of times where I have struggled with feelings of loneliness and depression and insecurity, and I would not be who I am today had I not gone through some of those bad things, things which I typically try to avoid. I might still be stuck in a place that wasn't teaching me to grow, where I take things at face value and I let people walk all over me. When life is good, absolutely enjoy it. But when life is hard, and this is easier said than done, remember that God gives us easy times and hard times for a reason. And nobody knows if our grayest days will bridge the gap into some of the most colorful days of our life. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below what your relationship with change is. If you have yourself experienced some change, whether good or bad, that has changed your outlook on it. We go through things that change every single day, so obviously everyone's going to have some kind of relationship with it. And I'm curious what to know what you know yours is. Like the video if you liked it. You've stayed this far, so hopefully there's something about the video that you like. Let me know what your favorite season is during the year because I talked a, a big game about how great autumn is, how great fall is, but my favorite season is actually winter. And I love November, even though, I mean, it is dreary and everything looks dead, but that's why I love it. So tell me down below what your favorite season is. I have lots of videos planned for the next four months through the end of October and then November, December with the holidays, and then January and February where we get the most snow. Hoping we get snow this year, oh my gosh. Again, thanks for watching, stick around for the next one.